Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today, as I promised, we're going to take a look at installing an NCE PowerCab DCC system here on the modules that we've been working on. You know, it's a fairly straightforward, easy process to install one, and you can be up and running in no time, really. So, stick around for the video. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box, and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it, and click all. That way, you'll be notified every time that I upload a new video. Okay, let's get started. And first, what we want to do is take a look at the NCE PowerCab uh, DCC system to give you an idea of what the components are, what they do, and how it works. Okay, the heart of the NCE system, the NCE PowerCab system, is the PowerCab throttle itself. Okay, and that uh, works off of a standard, or it's connected uh, to the uh, uh, control panel here by a standard six pin uh, cable, okay? So you just plug that in and you're ready to attach it. And then it is attached to the power interface here uh, using, uh, again, a simple, the other end of that cable. Okay? It just plugs right in here. And it always has to be plugged in to this particular uh, port. And it's facing, it's, it's the left-hand port. So it's always got to be plugged in there. Um, Another thing uh, I'll point out about these, uh, there are certain limitations, okay? You can only run 12 trains at a, tr at a time or 12 locomotives at a time. Uh, you can uh, only have two cabs at a time, including this one, which must stay plugged in all the time because it's the command station and also the booster. So if you unplug it, you're not gonna have any power to your system and you're not gonna have any command station connection. So it's, everything's gonna just stop dead. So this one, you can use it as a throttle, but it has to be plugged in. It's basically a stationary throttle at that point. But, you know, it's got, you can have a fairly long cord here and stretch out quite a distance. So for a module like this or for your simple four by eight foot layout, you could put this, you know, for your yard cab at your main yard and let your guys have fun with that while somebody else is working um, trains around on the layout using a small um, auxiliary throttle or a pro cab, similar to this one, that can be unplugged and moved to the next location. Now, another thing to be aware of, uh, the voltage limitation and amperage limitation. Now these come, mine came with a 13.8 volt uh, power supply. It's voltage regulated and, it, and, it's, uh, and it's limited to 1.44 amps. Now, you can go as high, they say, as three amps. However, I'll point out, everything is inside of this command station, the booster, everything is inside this case. And as a result, once you start running two, two maybe three locomotives, uh, it's gonna start to warm up. And if you start pumping in three amps and start using you know, two, two and a half amps, uh, this is gonna get warm. And it might get warm enough so that the uh, unit might shut down. I've never had it happen to me uh, because I don't run that many trains with it at a time, but it's something to be aware of. So there are some disadvantages to trying to pump this up to more than the 1.44 amps that you are supplied with, okay? But I just wanted to mention that because I know some of you will see this in the manual that it does say three amps maximum. And you can do that, but I don't recommend doing it you'll be pushing the system towards its limits. Okay, so um, the other thing to be then aware of is that you have, you have this interface panel that mounts on the front of your fascia or under your layout somewhere. You can put it anywhere you want, uh, just as long as it's available uh, or within reach of your throttle, a command station power cab here. And it serves as an interface between the command station and your power supply. And it's very nice. It has a nice little uh, a light here, a pilot light, so that you know you've got power. When power comes on, it lights up. And uh, then you've got a couple of outlets here for your command station. The command station must always be plugged into this uh, particular uh, uh, socket. And then this one is available for an additional throttle that you might want to use. 
Um, also on the back, you can see we have a, uh, an, another socket back here, and that's your expansion socket to go to a second uh, panel here that would be located elsewhere on your layout. And you can actually daisy chain several of these. Now, another thing back here is this socket here. And this barrel plug socket is where your power supply gets plugged into. So that provides the power to operate your, your system. And then the other uh, thing here on the back is this little interface here. And it's hard to show you this. It's a very small plug-in uh, screw terminal adapter. And you just attach your two wires to your main power bus here. And then that plugs in right there. So it's that simple. All you have to do is hook your two wires up to the power bus and plug it into the back here and you're ready to go as soon as you turn on the power. Let's go ahead and get started installing these interface uh, uh, devices here on the fascia of the layout. Okay, so I just uh, decided on a location where I wanted to install this interface panel and uh, I just marked out this rectangle here, uh, three quarters of an inch high and two and a quarter inches long. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, quarter inch drill bit and I'm just going to drill some pilot holes here uh, so that when the time comes I can put a uh, jigsaw blade in here and cut th through this. Because remember this is an eighth inch hardboard but there's a there's a three quarter inch piece of wood here behind here that makes up the, uh, the, the baseboard sides. So let me go ahead and drill. Let's go this way. It's okay to go outside the lines a little bit because you're going to be uh, you're going to have that cover plate covering up outside of this line. But you do need to have at, at least the minimum of three quarters by two and a quarter in order to get this uh, circuit board to fit through the hole, as I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do another one here. Okay, so that, that should give me a place to start with. So let me get my jigsaw out and we'll go to that. Okay, before I do too much damage, I'm gonna take some of my uh, blue painter's tape and outline this so that the uh, drill doesn't damage too much of this. Okay. I think I might do a little bit more. I wish I had wider tape to work with, but I don't. This works fine. Okay, that should keep the damage down to a, a bare minimum. Okay, let's see if I can get this to go in here. Mm -mm. Okay, I went ahead and pulled out the bigger guns, my 3 8 inch bit. So let's get an opening here big enough to work with. There. Now let's see if we've got room to work in here. There, I got that out. Now let's do a trial fit real quick. I see what it is. I'm catching on something there, so I think this needs to be opened up a little bit further.
Okay, that opened it up a little bit more. Let's see. And there we go. Got it mounted. Okay. So now I can pull this off and we can see how much damage we did here. Actually, not too bad. Okay, so there it is. All we have to do is get it lined up and leveled out and put four screws in here. So let me get my four screws and we'll go ahead and get that done. Okay, so what I need to do now is level this out. So I've got my level and get it leveled just right. Get the level out there. Okay, that's good right there. And I'm going to hold it in place and we'll go ahead and drill some pilot holes here. I just want to get two pilot holes drilled holding it like this. Okay, I forgot that these uh, are wood screws and they have the uh, flat head or the flat slot instead of the uh, Phillips head. But they'll go in the same. Okay, and we'll get another one. Okay, and now we need to drill the other holes. Okay, so now it's installed. Okay, so I just plugged in the uh, power supply and hooked it up to the rear, plugged in the throttle, and we now have DCC power on the layout. So that's how long it takes. So what I want to do now, though, is show you how to make the connections underneath of the layout so we can get the rest of this installation done. Okay, so now we have to make the connection to the power bus here on the back so that this, uh, the DCC system can provide power to the layout. Now for that, as I showed you, it requires hooking up this little uh, screw terminal to the rear of the uh, interface panel. And for that, uh, I've gone ahead and I've taken a pair of uh, the red and the black 16-gauge um, wire that we're using for the uh, uh, power bus, for the DCC power bus. And I stripped it and I pre-soldered the ends here so that it, uh, it's going to hold up a lot better in use. And then all you have to do is insert these into the slots provided in the screw terminal and then tighten the screws. Okay, and now that is ready to plug into the back of that interface panel to provide the DCC uh, power bus connection. So let's go ahead and make a connection to the bus itself. And for that, I'm going to use these suitcase connectors. These are called a quick splice. Uh, and they're available from allelectronics.com. And I buy a lot of stuff from All Electronics. Okay, and, and these are rated for making connections between two sect pieces of 14 to 18 gauge wire, which this being 16 gauge is going to be perfect. Now these are different from the 3M suitcase connectors in that they are only made for connecting one size of wire to the same size of wire. 
So that's why they call them a quick splice, okay? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the two ends of this adapter cable and using these quick splices, connect them, these two wires, to the red and the black wires here in our power bus. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so I just need to pull out the red and the black wires. Fit the uh, quick splice into place. I'm going to open it up a little bit to make it easier to work with. There we go. So put that into place like so. And since this is the red one, And then I'm going to take the red wire that we want to attach right here, slide it into place, and using my pliers, we can go ahead and crimp it. Okay, and there it is. Now let's do the other one. So I find it's always a good idea to open the face of these just a little bit. It allows it to slip over the wire much easier. Okay, so now I'm going to do the black wire in the pair. Okay, Bring that in, slide it into place. Like that. And I think this one has to come in from this side. Yep, okay. And then, move it forward and crimp it. Okay, and there we go. Okay, and that's all it is. And now we have a cable to connect to the rear of that interface panel. So let me go ahead. Unfortunately, I've got to flip the layout uh, the other way around in order to be able to show you that. Okay, so here is the back of the interface panel. And you can see the track connection goes here and the, PC, the DC power goes in here. That's marked on the bottom of the uh, on the bottom of the board. So all I have to do is take this guy, plug it in and take this one, plug it in and we've got power and we've got a connection to the DCC power bus. Now the other thing is the connection for any expansion panels. So here's one of my uh, RJ11 cables already made up. Let me go ahead and plug it in here. And that is ready to now be connected to the other expansion panels that I showed you when I get around to installing them in the other module. And that installation goes exactly like uh, the one I've just shown you. Uh, just cut out your hole, slide it in, and screw it in place. Uh, and then make that connection at the other end. And that's all there is to it. So let me go ahead and get this up on its legs and we'll give it a test and see if we can run a locomotive on the layout. Okay, here you can see I've got it all powered up. You can see by the light here on the front, move that out of the way, that we've got power. Also, the power cab tells you that um, we're controlling loco 2259 and right now we've got 0 0.01 amp current draw on the track, because I do have a locomotive sitting up there. Okay, um, let me go ahead and plug in the other throttle. And I've got address, so oh, locomotive 5775 selected here on this one, as you can see, if I can get the glare off of it. So let me go ahead and we'll go up to the track level and see if it works. Okay, let's go get it, uh, go ahead and give it a test drive now that all the wiring's installed and the DCC system's installed. 
Let me point out that the sound of the locomotive might be just a little muted because uh, I'm just wearing a lavalier microphone, so uh, it's not a directional microphone pointed at the uh, at the locomotive itself. So let's uh, let's go ahead. We've got a a wagon of coal that we can deliver uh, to the engine shed. So let's see how how it maneuvers through these various turnouts and uh, and gets to the other side. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. I hope that uh, fills you in on how to install an NCE DCC system on your model railroad. And to be honest with you, you can use the same approach for just about any of the major brands that I'm aware of. It's primarily just hooking up two wires and going once you get the basic wiring done. So that's it and uh, have a great weekend. We'll see you here again on Monday with another new video from the DCC guy. 